children. Welcome to another episode of Brain Food. Today we are learning all about the environment. The word environment refers to the surroundings in which a person, animal, or plant lives. Here's a fun exercise to start thinking about the environment. Go outside with a pencil and a piece of paper. Write a description of everything you can see, hear, taste, smell, and feel. Everything that surrounds you makes up the environment in which you live in. Hey guys, it's me, Scott. I'm here at Circle B Bar Reserve with Cassie. She's the natural resources educator for the park, and she's going to tell me a little bit about the park and why it's such a cool place for kids to come visit. So Cassie, Circle B has a lot of activities and trails to explore. What is available out here for kids to enjoy? So we have two different options. We have the schools that can come on site and do a guided program. And we have programs that are family friendly with, um, on Saturdays. So those are the events. Why is it important for kids to come out into nature at a place like Circle B? So being out in nature is really great for your health, for your physical health, for your mental health, and you're always learning something new out here at Circle B. What can kids learn when they come out to Circle B? So we have programs that are aligned with the Florida Sunshine State Standards for third through fifth grade to do a field studies program. And those four topics are seasonal changes, impact on the environment, life cycles, and energy in the environment, which is food chains. So those are our programs that we have for kids to come on site and do field studies programs. Then when you're here on your own and you're doing the trails, it's nature's home, so anything can happen. You can see a bald eagle soaring by, uh, hear an alligator growl, um, watch the beautiful plants and animals, how they interact, like a bee that's interacting with, uh, with a flowering plant. Um, so it's new every single day. You said that being in nature is good for your health, but what makes it healthy? So a couple things with regards to your physical health. Um, being outdoors and being active helps build strong bones. So that's really important as a kid to have that strong, uh, those strong bones. What are some other benefits that kids can have from being outdoors more often? Children who spend time outdoors are less likely to be overweight by 27 to 41 percent. Children with living within a half mile of the park, they're more likely to have higher levels of physical activity and five times more likely to have a healthy weight. It also builds a positive immune system. So when you think bacteria, some people think of the bad bacteria, but in dirt is good bacteria, and that helps support the immune system for early childhood development. Exposure to nature can reduce stress levels by as much as 28% in children. It's also important to get vitamin D, and that comes from the sun. And vitamin D helps with energy levels for kids. So just 10 minutes outside can help support your daily vitamin D dose. Learning out at Circle B is pretty hands-on. What is the benefit to learning in a hands-on way? Yeah, when kids are outside, there is so much involved in this learning. There's problem solving. So there's not really one true answer when it comes to being outdoors. Picking up a stick, you could find something that's crawling inside the stick, or you could build your own shelter. So it's a really good problem solving. That also builds kids' confidence. So if they're a little anxious at first about being outdoors, one cool thing can spark that interest and that confidence. What can I do outside to get active? Do I just walk on trails? No, what's really great about being outdoors, it's always something that you can do. For example, you can collect some leaves on the ground to make some artwork and take some sticks with it too. You can also build shelters so you can have your own little schoolhouse or own Star Wars game if you want as well. So those are some activities that you can do that can relate your hobbies to being outdoors. And then with sports, why not just um, walk around and play a game of hide and seek? Um, or a game of tag and use the natural environment to help camouflage you as well. So that's a really fun way to get involved with nature. This sounds so fun. How can I get involved with Circle B or other Polk County parks? So you of them will be one of the 6,000 people that come here weekly to Circle B Bar Reserve to enjoy the trails. The trails are open from sunrise to sunset where you can enjoy our pristine habitats where there are four different types that you can see. You can see a lake habitat at Lake Hancock. You can see the marsh habitat by going out Heron Hideout. You can see our oak hammock habitat by going on the Shady Oak Trail. 
And then finally, you can go to our uplands habitat and look at the Eagle Roost Trail, where there is an active bald eagle nest with eggs that are incubating right now. Thanks so much for telling me more about Circle B. There are plenty of parks located all around Polk County, so you'll never run out of places to explore. Take your parents out on the trail this weekend for some fun outdoor activity. I'll see you next time. Bye. Hi, I'm Ariana, and I'm here at Explorations 5 Children's Museum for this segment of Senses Overdrive. This is Layla. She's going to be helping us with our activity today. So, Layla, what do you have us doing? Well, today what we're going to do is instead of lemonade stands, we're going to create an orange juice stand. Ooh. We just we, we just got delivered our oranges for La Florida, and so what we want to do is we want to celebrate this exhibit. So oh, this is what we're going to be doing this month in February and in March. So how we're going to do this is we want children to problem solve. So of course. How, do you th how can we make a durable, strong orange juice stand? Well, since we have a box here, that would be great as a base for our orange juice stand. That would be very durable, I think. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't blow too much in the wind. Um, these look like they would be great posts to maybe put up a sign. What do you think? I think that's a great idea. <laughs> but what do you think we need in case the wind's blowing and it might be a windy day outside? That's true. We probably need something to hold them down. <gasps> like maybe some bricks? That sounds like a great idea. I think those are heavy enough, don't you? Oh yeah, they're really heavy. <laughs> okay, so I think that would add some weight to it. Yes, of course. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna test this out. Okay, okay so here's our challenge. <laughs> All right, so let's take this, put this on the floor. Okay. And we're gonna use a leaf blower. Ooh. <laughs> let's see how far it'll go. <laughs> Put the bricks right. back on to keep it sturdy. Yep. I'll let you do the, I'll let you. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Turn that on and let's see what happens. Of course. Thank you. Oh. Doesn't look like it's going anywhere. I think we're good. <laughs> what we're going to do now is we're going to create to have curb appeal. We yes. want our orange stand to be attractive and we want our orange stand where people want to come and get orange juice. Exactly. Okay, so we should probably start by maybe painting it so people know it's an orange stand. Okay. That's a great idea. Now that people know what we want by reading this, it says orange juice, we can maybe decorate it so people will be invited in. Yes. We do. How much though? Not much? free. It can be free. Um, 50 cent a cup? 50 cents? Yes, I think so. Sure, 50 cents for some orange juice. Okay. Here, I can write that on a piece of paper. because visuals are very important. Yes, they are. Thank you. You're welcome. That's it. There you go. That right, looks we're, great. We're getting there. Yes. I found some crates on the side of the road. Okay. And so I add, put some oranges in there. Where do you think we could place this? Probably up here so that people here. can see it. All right. That looks good. And I was thinking, because it's orange juice. Yes. That's great. And we can use that to make the orange juice, That's too. That's right. That's right. And then people will know that we're making it. And maybe That's they right. can come see us make it. Absolutely. Well, now since we made our orange juice stand, yes. what we're going to be doing today is, and then we also decorated it and we gave it curb appeal, right? Yes. OK. What we're going to do is we're going to make the orange juice. We have to have a product. Yes, we do. Okay. But here's my question. OK. How many? Do you think oranges is it going to take to fill? I think probably three oranges. Is around. that what you estimate? I think so. All right, let's see. Yes. Okay. So you're going to slice an orange in half. You're and just going to squish it. Okay. Yeah. 
Great. That doesn't look like a lot of juice now, does it? It doesn't. That's what I was thinking. We probably need more than one. And this is just half of an orange, so. That's right. Try right, to get all the juice out you can. Ugh, and then you get the most out of your orange. Now we're on one and a half, right? Yes, we are. And we're almost, I would say we're doing pretty good for one and a half. It's pretty juicy oranges. <laughs> Thank you. And we'll use this other half as I start to cut this one. Now, what do you think is on the top? What is that? This? Pulp. Oh, the pulp, yes. The pulp. And the pulp's, what it's going to be is fresh orange juice. The pulp's not inside the juice. Yes. Okay. Pulp free. <laughs> it's my favorite kind of orange juice. It's pul pulp free, definitely. All right. Well, okay. three oranges. We almost made it halfway. I think that's great. That's right. Okay. So now we have our product. We do. Let's pour it in our cup. Okay. Pour it into a cup. Here, I want some. Of course. A little bit for me. Of course, here. I'll give you some of mine, too. All right. Let's taste our product. Of course. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> that tastes mm. great. Mm. Oh. If only we could add something to it, like pineapple or strawberries, that would make this even better. Way to make an orange juice stand with a twist. Yes, that sounds great. Absolutely. <laughs> Good thinking. Good skills. Good thinking skills. Thank you. I had so much fun. Me too. If you really want to put your senses into overdrive, come here to Explorations 5 Children's Museum in downtown Lakeland. See you again soon. Bye. Hey. I hope you are all enjoying learning all about the environment on today's episode of Brain Food. As I mentioned in the last segment, the word environment refers to the surroundings in which a person, animal, or plant lives. It's very important to take care of the environment because everything that surrounds you affects your well-being. For example, if your environment is dirty, smelly, and cluttered, that might make you feel angry or sad. On the other hand, if you take care of your environment, you have a greater chance of feeling calm and happy. So the next time your mom or dad tells you to clean your room, make sure you listen. A clean environment is one step towards a happy mind. Well, it's somewhere over here. I think. Uh, well, this is a bit different, isn't it? Oh, and I don't even know the, the name of today's book, but we'll get started, shall we? Stanley the Sand Skink was rudely awakened one bright spring day by a terrible roaring sound. Is it an alligator, he thought, or, or a black bear? The sand around him began to shake and Stanley fell out of bed. What's going on, he wondered, as he shook himself to clear his head. The roaring was getting louder when Stanley began to make his way up through the sand to look around. He didn't make much progress, though, as the hole he'd dug the night before was filling up and the sand was coming in faster than he could make his way through it. The closer he got to the surface, the louder the roar became and Stanley started to worry. Maybe I shouldn't go up. Maybe it, wouldn't, maybe it would be better just to stay here and wait until whatever it is goes away. In the end, however, his curiosity outweighed his fear and he continued to the top of the small hole and poked his head up to take a look around. What he saw worried him very much. Humans. They were milling about all over the place, wearing round yellow hats and stomping about in big boots. Worse still, they had all manner of huge, noisy machines with them as well. This can't be good, he thought, as he climbed out of the sand and slowly looked around in all directions. The humans were everywhere, and one of the big machines was knocking over the trees. A shadow passed by him on the, on the sand and Stanley froze, remembering what he had learned in school. Look up and watch for an attack 
or you'll become some birdie's snack. He folded his legs beneath him in preparation to dive back into the sand when a scrub jay landed in front of him. Don't go, said the scrub jay. I'm not hungry, so I'm not here to eat you. Stanley wondered briefly if he was still asleep. He'd never spoken with a bird before. This was all very odd and more than a little disturbing. You're going to have to move, said the scrub jay. Well, what do you mean, asked Stanley. The humans are making another one of their big ugly nests here, said the scrub jay. If you stay here, little skink, they'll build it right over the top of you. But I was here first, shouted Stanley, forgetting for a moment that he was having a conversation with someone who was capable of eating him for breakfast. They don't care about that, the scrub jay responded, ruffling her feathers and stomping her tiny little feet. They just take what they want when they want it. Stanley flopped down on the sand. It wasn't fair. He liked this section of pine flats. The ferns and the grass weren't too thick and it was close to a lake. There's some beautiful land on the other side of the lake, said the scrub jay. The humans don't seem to want to build a nest there. I know an alligator, the humans moved to that land. They tied him up, threw him in the back of one of their big machines and dropped him off there. Stanley sighed. I can't even see the other side of the lake, said Stanley. How am I going to get there? The scrub jay cocked her little head and frowned at the young skink. She was about to give him a piece of her mind when another one of the big machines roared to life. This one was much closer to them, spewed very thick and smelly smoke and had large silver blades that had begun to tear up the grass. The scrub jay began to hop around with worry. I'll take you there, she said, but we'll have to hurry. It doesn't look like you have much time. Stanley looked at the bird and frowned. How do I know you're not going to carry me off and eat me? The bird lifted effortlessly off the ground and hovered in front of him. If that machine comes any closer, she said, you'll be dead anyway. Do you want to come with me or not? Stanley didn't have to consider things for long. The loud whirring machine grunted and belched a large stream of black smoke and headed straight for them sending the tall grass and ferns flying in all directions. She was right. He had to leave. I'll go, he shouted over the machine. Please get me out of here. With that, the scrub jay darted forward, grabbed either side of his neck and took off. The sensation was dizzying and Stanley squirmed to get free. Stop moving around, cried the bird and squeezed him tighter with her claws. Her claws were sharp and pinched him hard, so he stopped struggling. Open your eyes, silly. You're missing the ride. Stanley could feel the wind buffeting him in the face and wasn't at all sure he wanted to see what was going on. Skinks aren't supposed to fly, he thought, and squeezed his eyes shut even tighter. And then the same thought came to him again. Skinks aren't supposed to fly. When would he ever have this chance again? And with that, he opened his eyes wide and stared open-mouthed at the beauty of the clouds above and the lake below. It's beautiful, he shouted. The scrub jay gave a loud, shrill call and dove towards the surface of the water. She pulled out of the dive just before Stanley's feet hit the water and then flew back and forth just above the surface of the lake. It was the most thrilling experience Stanley had ever had and he was disappointed when the opposite side of the shore came into view. The landing was not pretty, and both of them tumbled and rolled, and when they hit the grass on the other side of the lake, both of them laughed as they tried to catch their breath. Thanks so much, said Stanley, wrapping his body around the bird and giving her a big hug for saving me and for the amazing ride. The little bird shook her feathers and Stanley released her. She stared at him with her head cocked to one side. Lizards are food. Stanley nodded, not particularly fond of the direction the conversation was taking. But when you're not hungry, she said, lizards can be friends. 
I agree, said Stanley, now nodding furiously. I'm Lindy, said the bird. I'm Stanley, answered the skink. The scrub jay nodded, lifted off the ground and flew away. Stanley waved at her as she disappeared into the trees. He hoped he'd see her again, but right now he had a new home to explore. And so he walked away to do just that. Well now, that was a very nice story and this turned out to be a very nice place to read. Thank you for joining us on Storytime. Hey kids, are you ready to power up? This month I'm outside enjoying the beautiful scenery here at Lakeland Highland Scrub. This area is located in South Lakeland and contains 551 acres of natural communities and wildlife. Lakeland Highland Scrub is home to two trails, the Shady Oak Trail, which is about half a mile long, and the Tortoise Trail, which is a little bit harder, a little over two miles long. While you're out on the trail, you might be lucky enough to spot some different creatures that live here, such as a gopher, tortoise, armadillo, scrub jay, owl, fox, or bobcat. Just remember to observe from afar. All right, let's get started with our workout. We're out here on the trail now, and I've chosen a spot way out there that I'm gonna run to. I'm gonna run there and back, and every time I hit my starting line, I'll do a different strength exercise. Follow along. Are you ready? Power up. I hope you enjoyed that workout. I'll see you next time on Power Up. Our second word of the day is conservation. Conservation is a noun, which means the protection of things found in nature. You might ask yourself, why is it important to protect nature? Why should I care? Well, remember what I said earlier about the environment? 
everything in the environment affects you, whether you know it or not. Everything in nature, all of the forests, trees, plants, and animals, they all have a crucial role in keeping up the balance of our daily life. For example, if one species of an animal becomes extinct, that might affect another species that depends on them, for better or for worse. This is why it's very important to protect and conserve things found in nature. You can do this by leaving plants and animals in the wild alone. Instead of picking flowers, admire them in their natural habitat. When you go to the park, make sure you don't leave anything behind. Take everything that you brought with you into the park back out of the park. Those are a couple of ways in which you can play your part in the conservation of nature. Hey guys, it's me, Bo. It's time for another simple snack. Today, we're going to make a recipe that's simple, healthy, and uses ingredients that you may already have in your own home. This recipe is no-bake, which means it's very easy to make. It doesn't require an oven or a microwave at all. All that you need is a refrigerator to store them in after you make it. And it also makes it more fun because you don't have to wait for it to bake at all. We're making five-minute no-bake granola bites. You'll need two cups of oats, two cups of coconut flakes, one cup of, one cup of peanut butter, one cup of ground flaxseed, one cup of chocolate chips, two thirds cup of honey, two teaspoons of vanilla, and one teaspoon of cinnamon if you want. If you have a peanut allergy, remember that you can substitute the peanut butter for any type of nut butter like sunflower seed butter, almond butter, or cashew butter. To start out, grab a mixing bowl that is big enough to fit all of your ingredients together. Put all of the dry ingredients into the bowl. This would be your oats, coconut, flaxseed, chocolate chips, and cinnamon. <laughs> Mix those together with a big spoon. Once those are combined well, add in your wet ingredients, peanut butter, honey, and vanilla. Make sure that you have a baking sheet or a big plate in handy. Grab small amounts of the mixture and roll them into small bite-sized portions. Once you're finished, store them in the fridge to keep them fresh. Because of the honey and peanut butter, they will hold together on their own, so they're ready to eat right away if you don't want to wait for them to get cold. Mm. This is a great balance of healthy grains like oats and flaxseed, while still tasting great with the chocolate and peanut butter. It's a great snack to fix those sweet cravings. Thanks for making this snack with me. I'll see you next time, bye. I hope that you continue to think about the importance of conserving the environment. It is our responsibility to protect and preserve the world in which we live in. If you'd like more examples of how to conserve, just ask your mom or dad. Remember, every little step counts. I'll see you next time for more terminology.